In this video, we're going to cover how to solve algebraic inequalities like these two, which involve two inequality signs. The idea with these is that you want to get the x in the middle entirely by itself, so it doesn't want to be being multiplied or added to anything. But importantly, whatever you do to the middle section, you also have to do to both of the sides. For example, in this first one, to get the x by itself, we need to get rid of this 3 and this 2. So first, we subtract 3 from the left, the middle, and the right. To get negative 6 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than 6. And then to get rid of the 2, we divide the left, middle, and right all by 2. To get negative 3 is less than or equal to x which is less than 3. And that's our answer. So we've basically found that x is in between negative 3 and positive 3. For the second question here, which says that 4 is more than 2 minus x over 3, which is more than or equal to negative 5, we'd start by subtracting 2 from everything. To get 2 is more than negative x over 3, which is more than or equal to negative 7. Then we can multiply everything by 3 to get 6 is more than negative x, which is more than or equal to negative 21. And finally, we can multiply everything by negative 1 to make our x term positive. But remember that when you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number like this, you also have to swap the inequality signs around. So it becomes negative 6 is less than x, which is less than or equal to positive 21. In exams, you'll often get questions like this, where we're told that n represents a whole number, such that 8 is less than 3n plus 2, which is less than or equal to 17. And you have to list all the possible values of n. So, all the whole numbers that n could be. The first thing you need to do here is rearrange it all to get the n by itself in the middle. So, subtract 2 from everything to get 6 is less than 3n, which is less than or equal to 15. And then divide everything by 3 to get 2 is less than n, which is less than or equal to 5. At this point, we know that n has to be between 2 and 5, and can also be 5 itself. So because we were told in the question that n is a whole number, we know that the only possible values of n are 3, 4, and 5. If it helps, you can draw this out on a number line, where we put little circles above the 2 and the 5, and then join them up with a line to show that n has to be somewhere in this region. Importantly though, n has to be more than 2. It can't be 2 itself. So we leave this circle above the 2 blank. Whereas because n is less than or equal to 5, it can be 5 itself, which means we fill in this circle above the 5. So the possible values of n are 3, 4, and 5. Of course, if we hadn't been told that n was a whole number, then it could also have been any of the decimal values in between. But they'll normally say something about it being a whole number or an integer. So just read the question carefully and watch out for it. Anyway, that's everything for this video. So hope it all made sense, and cheers for watching!